Hey guys, welcome back. It has been almost two years since I last published a video, but I am somewhat back now. First, let me thank everyone for subscribing to my channel and thank you to everyone not unsubscribing since I was gone. It really means a lot to me that the channel has grown, although I did not publish any new videos for such a long time. Before we go into the video, I would like to take the opportunity to share a bit of what happened and why I was gone for such a long time. Um, now, I'm not going into too much detail, but basically I got sick in the beginning of 2021. I was brought to hospital several times by ambulance, had to stay there two times, once in February and once in November of that year. Ever since I was released from hospital in February of 2021, I have to deal with severe pain. It's chronic pain. I have to take very strong pain meds just to get through the day. Now, right after I was released in February, I gave myself a few weeks, but then continued studying and continued making videos as normal. However, I still felt quite sick back then and had to abort my semester. This whole situation does not only interfere with YouTube, but also with my studies at university. The thing is, after my last stay at hospital, I tried to make a few videos, but decided not to publish them. They were just a few minor projects, and the problem was that I didn't like how I sounded. You could clearly hear that I was in pain, and I don't want that. Also, I had quite a short fuse, and whenever something went wrong, it really, really annoyed me. And that's just not how I normally am. So I gave myself some time, and I started off uh, this semester, and I'm now actually a week away from this, this semester's exam period. So until the exam period is over and I, uh, well, I'm finished with this semester, I'm going to continue with the YouTube channel as before. And my goal is to publish one video per week. Um, but I thought it might be a good opportunity to uh, tell you guys that I'm back. And... Um, yeah, so I am back and I will try to give you one video per week uh, in five weeks after July, because that's when the exam period is over. Um, however, I can't promise that I publish videos at all or on a regular basis, because the thing is, over these past two years... Um, it has gotten better in the way that I can deal with the pain more easily and the medication is effective. But my number one priority are my studies at university and YouTube, unfortunately, is only second priority. So, um, yeah. That's basically... Uh, everything that I wanted to say about this whole situation. So thank you very, very much to everyone that subscribed and stayed and waited for me to come back. And now let's go into the video. Okay, so let's go ahead into the actual video. The video is about this thing over here. This is a pump that I used for the past, yeah, two years to water cool my computer. Now, I planned on making a video at that time, but as I said, um, I didn't really feel all that great, but I will make a video about my water cooling loop um, once I have time for this. But in the meantime, in this video, I would like to take a look inside of this pump because this thing started to make noise, very annoying noise. Um, let me give you an example of how it sounded. The pump is running at 40% speed. And that's the noise. Okay, so let me get the pump to 60%. Now let's go to 100%. 
And that's the red limos at 100% pump speed. So as you can hear, it definitely started to make some weird noise and I would like to take a look inside and see if I can repair it. That would be great, but if not, well, that's unfortunate. Um, this pump over here, however, is something very special because at the time when I water-cooled my computer, I bought this pump for just 18 euro. And because it was so good, I bought a second one only two months after the first one, and it was already at 23 euro. And the people have caught onto this uh, pump that popped up on, on eBay and Amazon, and now the cheapest of this cost 35 euro. It's a 4-pin PWM controlled pump. It fits into a standard uh, header and the nice thing is this pump only has 6 watt of power which means with only half an amp of consumption you can use a standard 4-pin header on your motherboard. It does not require a special high current header. The pump in normal operation is very silent and has plenty of power. Now, I, as I said, I have a second one as a spare, and actually a third different kind which is currently installed into the computer as a, a kind of a test. And um, yeah, I would like to restore this because, again, they now cost 35 euro. And the whole idea was to build a water cooling loop as cheaply as possible, which I did. Now, I am going to uh, make a video as said, but for now let's um, see if we can figure out what is going on. Okay, I think it should now be open. And let's remove all the screws. Now we can open it up. Okay, so we do have a silicone o-ring, a very interesting shape actually. We have the intake on the top and the outlet on the side, so we suck in in the middle and we have it coming out the side. Spinning the impeller by hand does not feel like there is any restriction. I should maybe remove the o-ring before I'm going to lose it. So nothing in the top side that could cause the noise. It f spins freely. There's a bit of play, but nothing too obvious. Now how am I going to open it up further? Um, yeah, this plastic part is friction fit or press fit inside of the outer housing so should be able to remove it. And that's it. So, it's the bottom part, and here's the electronics. Okay, we have some plastic clips holding the PCB in place. Um, that is very difficult. I don't know. I suspect there to be a problem with the bearing, but the motor seems to be completely enclosed. No, it's not. Oh, that's interesting. So the middle part should... Yeah, it does come out, actually. Oh my god. Okay, so I don't need to get the PCB out because underneath can see we have the windings. I don't want to damage the windings, so I'm going to get it back in place. We don't have to do anything 
with that. So I don't want to damage the motor. Okay, so that's back in place. So the bottom part is fine. And this part... Hmm. What in the world could cause this rattling? I have absolutely no idea. There is... There is some play, but not as severe. There needs to be some play between the impeller and the, the shaft over here, and it shouldn't cause any problem. No, there's very little. The electronics look fine, there's nothing damaged. Nothing obviously damaged. Okay, so I am speechless. I don't see a problem. The electronics seem to be fine, and the um, impeller seems to be fine as well. There is some play, but that is to be expected. And there's no obvious problem if I spin it by hand. And nothing that should cause this noise. There's no damage, no nothing. So let's reassemble the pump and just pump some water through it and see if it again makes the noise. And if it doesn't, maybe there was just something in there that I did not see coming out while disassembling. I don't know. Um, hmm. That's a weird case. I mean, I'm not really experienced with water cooling pumps um, in the sense of like repairing them or something. But the play on the impeller and the housing and everything seems to be fine. Um, so no electronics damage, which I did not expect. I expected there to be a problem with the impeller. I expected there to be some problem, but yes, there is some play, but not nearly as much as uh, it to be causing any problem. If I get this on top, I mean, that's another thing. So the pump, this impeller, sits in in the lower half. We have the windings. Uh, and some magnets um, because yeah there is some attraction and we have this permanent magnet over here and with changing the magnetic field we get this spinning and then we get the water in the middle and you see these openings the water gets also goes down into this bottom part and that is because we want the water to both lubricate and also cool the pump itself well, that's why we have those openings to allow water to actually get down there and by spinning the impeller we basic basically force the water outwards that gets catched or caught by the inner part of the top and then uh, thrown out here well thrown well in a way yes <laughs> it comes out there so and in the top part we have those two rings and we have two rings over here. This inner ring sits between these two and the outer ring on the outside and they fix the impeller in place and act as a kind of secondary bearing. So yeah, let's uh, reassemble and see if it still makes the same noise. If it does, that means I can't fix it. I mean, what can I do? Okay, so this is how we are going to test the pump. Uh, it sits here with tubes going into this uh, container, glass container, with some water inside. The tubes are both pre-filled and I'm then going to attach it. Well, I have it already attached to this thing. This goes 
over there into a fan controller and the fan controller gets connected to the power supply I just simply have to connect the positive to the fan controller and then I will run the pump at 100% speed and remove the outlet tube and we can see how the flow is and listen to the noise so let me get the uh, tripod back in place and then we can conduct this experiment so yes it does work oh no okay so let's listen to the pump let me remove the microphone and then you can listen to it but let me tell you this it no longer makes the noise as before it's currently connected to the camera and that is at 100% speed okay so I have the microphone pointing towards the pump oops sorry I need to get you guys back in place the microphone right now is approximately as far away as it was in the small video you saw before. Now let me turn down the speed, maybe that changes something. But as you can see, or rather here, it did not change a thing. I'm pretty sure there was some debris inside of here that caused the rattling noise um, and now it's gone. So I'm happy with that. Um, it's a bit unfortunate that there was not more but we could take a look inside of a water cooling pump and see how it works. And now that the problem solved itself I'm totally happy because those pumps they now cost 35 euro and that's just ridiculous for that price you can actually buy a proper water cooling pump i hope you liked the video anyway and if you did please leave a like comment down below and other than that thanks for watching and see you next time bye